much has been happening. Those meetings sure did make me hungry. Uh, Hyman didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seems pretty fired up, huh? About hunting, of all things. At least a little frightened. Well, Fremenay was now that Hyman thinks about it, but everyone else just looks a little surprised. Do you feel more confident after the meetings, Paimon? Is something wrong? Uh, did you just pour some tea? Hyma didn't notice you doing that at all! No, I did not. <laughs> then what's this? Hyma's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I nearly refrained from saying anything till now. Excuse me? <laughs> Is it the Trismegistus? Aw, oh, have you forgotten me already? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. We heard a voice in the sky in Sumeru. The voice Sumeru. from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Well, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Who are you, and what do you want with us? Hmm. Consider me a passerby, just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. Your friend's disciple. So you're not Mona's master. You're one of the others. So this is one of... Um, the friends of Mona's master, the enigmatic N of the Hexen Circle. Allow me to ask you, will Fontaine's prophecy come the true? Prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? Then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything into that so easily be changed? There it is again. Fate. Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? Pretty sure I exist outside of this world's fate, so I can force anything. Well, what is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important. Because I'm a descender or whatever. It also sounds kind of scary. The tea in the teacup is just about gone as well. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant. But others, you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tavath's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice, it's gone. Mage N. Is this the clue you're leaving for us? The unexpected news leads to... Oh, okay. When you wake up, someone seems to be outside. Uh, what? I want to hear someone talking. Uh, alright, alright. Coming! You're getting more diligent, Paimon. Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? Well... I see I've walked in on some lively banter. It'd be like that. How have you been these past few days? Fine, just fine. I beat to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Yeah, Charlotte is definitely interesting. I'm pessimistic about this. 
One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes, it was Charlotte. You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist. Daredevil. I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but how can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Actually, somebody already came over. Huh? You tell Mona about your mysterious guest. Goodness gracious. Are you serious? I believe she came to pass a message to us. Also, I'm very interested in the Hexen Circle or whatever. I hope they become a major plot point in this game. She said that even the God's Gate has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named Aang, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that Aang's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and Aang's been around for longer than that. Nah. Oh. It's to be expected. Circle sounds like a scary group, but they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not I mean, it involves anything she the entire fate of a country, Mona. So yeah, it is important. Yes, she Unless you want them all to different. die. I suspect she means that there's still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. True. Her words were meant as a helpful hint. But when will we realize their value and meaning? Honestly, her just telling us that it is possible to force fate in a different direction is helpful enough means we're not on a fool's errand. What's the best answer that my question could have gotten? Traveler, Paimon, are you two all right? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I not see. for us, because we're not Fontanian. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart. And to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff. Uh, oh, I need to get going. Don't worry about it, Mona. And thank you. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Or when I'm sent to get I you to pay your bills. I'm kind of moved by what Mona said. But also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler. Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. Go to the news stand.
understand. Okay. Can do. Bets on if this will be over in an hour? Uh, huh? My names are written in this newspaper. Uh, what's going on? Maybe we're famous. What the underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripood, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Just do something minorly yes. illegal. Did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blind adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. White fairy. It's said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet. The Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her. She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? That sure seems to be the case. And let's not forget that we told her we went to jail because you spoiled the ending of a novel. Ugh. So Paimon will forgive her this time. And I am a world walker, so she's not wrong. As it turns out. Continue moving forward. For me, it's backward, because this is where I came from. We're here! <sighs> Paimon's hungry. Should we go in and get something to eat? It hasn't already sold out for the day? It's like nighttime. It's so delicious the last time we tried it. Despite the tense situation we were in, let's give it another go. I'm sure it'll be great. We can't let anyone get ahead of us. One slice of cake, please. <gasps> Someone showed up after all. Illegal. Oh, hey, you're the one from the Palais Mermonia. I still don't understand why oh, your wings are a different color than your body. <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wow. Did he really say something like that? Wow. That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Mm, usually every day. Oh, dedicated. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh, then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but maybe... Maybe the water could rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Oh, the prophecy. Why are you trying to, to terrify honest, the Melusine? I Melusine? not much attention to that. No, uh, still... Even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no. It's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. <laughs> I like this Melusi. Huh. She okay, understands. Yes. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh, you know Sijuin? 
They're all from the same one. tiny little village. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily. Yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. Completely unrelated, but this Melusine, like, speech pattern sounds like the, um, the guy who can see the future in, what is that, Men in Black 3? Is it Men in Black 3? Whatever, the dude who's not really humanoid, it's like a thing in his head or whatever. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> Bye. And there she goes. All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. I thought she ordered them to go. Am I supposed to take this plate with me? You share a glance with Paimon and snarf it's down the cake. Snarf. Interesting. The flavor gets even better with a sip of tea. It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow. It sure would be nice if this corner was lit. <laughs> what a beautiful view of this plant. Can I buy anything from you that I don't already have? Hi. Oh, I can. Give me. Yeah. Give me all of your flour, because I'm apparently out. Um, give me all your cream, because I'm apparently out of that as well. Uh, okay. Same thing with the butter. I'm apparently out of resources. That's fine. Those are fine. Yeah, those are fine. Thanks, dude. Okay. Well, I can definitely level up the fountain once. So that's good. I don't know, I have a bunch of new recipes that I can make. Oh, we're near the seabird office. Let's go look for Charlotte and have a chat. Have a chat. Wee. Wow, if it isn't the traveler and Paimon. Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? I sure did. Yeah, you've got some nerve. We just used up to make some quick mora. Can we negotiate a profit split? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Ooh, thank you. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought it point to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So yep. she mentioned me, what did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case... Can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? Sure, I guess. But can we do it after I fight a narwhal? Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. You seriously want to interview me? Yeah. say you're worth an interview then you're worth it but not right now of course i'll need a few days to prepare oh in that case we'll just chat when you have the time then oh so that's a yes oh splendid i'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately i'll have to apply for lighting a venue some props and <laughs> oh so 
so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Wait, Charlie. I might still get a question for you. She's like I already run away. If just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would you do today? Huh. That's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they'd do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. It sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. But anyway, well, that's I'm my answer. Happy you're and passionate. On that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the scene, shall we? Okay, I guess. Man, we still have... The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? The Farina um, trial. And then, I don't know how we get thinking. to the narwhal. Yeah? If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? Well, I can't leave this world until I find my brother. If I could choose, huh? Hmm. It's just like Charlotte said. Suddenly trying to consider what to do is pointless. We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either with us always being on the road and whatnot. Until that moment comes, I think I'll keep journeying on. You mean still traveling? Uh, yes, cherishing every single moment that I have to look upon this world. Oh. We've always been doing exactly the banter goes back and forth between the two of you as time slips by as night falls you return to your accommodation and end this busy day the next few days are just as calm charlotte comes to find you and conducts the interview in the spina di pizzula safe house at the fleuv sand navia having finished her business in poisson even drops by to take a photo with the two of you. All goes well. Ah! Guess I can't grow mold if you stay here long enough. But it's still better than the Fortress of Miripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. You're from the Palais Mermonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervillat sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, so are you under the impression that we might be wanted criminals? <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Let's hear it. Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. 
Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her. What? Loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. This was definitely orchestrated. The continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break Fatui. out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marisha say Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marisha say has dispatched many people to search for her. But we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? You say that, but she is so weak that she was almost just blatantly killed by the knave. And the knave didn't kill her because she was too pathetic. So yeah, anyone could hurt her, apparently. I understand the situation, though. Good. Monsieur Nervilet sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry, this is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, <sighs> is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. The trap has been set. You sure caught on quickly. She won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervala was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. <laughs> well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? I see becoming a detective's done you some good. In that case, there's not a moment to lose. 